So you finally decided to buy a new computer. You go down to your local computer store, and what do you find? A zillion choices. How do you decide what to buy? Should it be a Macintosh or a PC? If it's a PC, what brand of PC? And what kind of display? How much memory? How big a hard drive? Should you get a CD-ROM? And on and on and on. Today, we'll help you answer those questions as we bring together a group of experts to give you advice on how to buy a new computer on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me today is Andy Reinhardt, West Coast Bureau Chief for Byte Magazine. Andy, we have two computers here, an IBM PC compatible. This is an HP Vectra, a Macintosh Centris over here. They both look pretty much alike. The question I get from someone who's buying a new computer, what should I buy, a Macintosh or a PC? How do you answer that question? I get asked this question all the time. It used to be easier because the Mac was quite a bit more expensive than the PC, so it was partly a question of what you could afford. Yeah. But now the prices on Macs have come down so much that that's really not an issue. Um, what you're going to do with the system is often a point that I suggest to people, but in fact, the applications are about the same yeah. for both the systems. So I really think what it comes down to is how much computer expertise you have going into it. And if you're willing to get in there and roll up your sleeves and kind of get to know the system really well, you can still get some better deals on PCs. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are harder to use. You have to mess around with autoexec bat and config sys files and BIP switches and yeah. jumpers and IRQs and that sort of thing. I think with the Mac, basically everything works out of the box. Now, of course, they're trying to correct that with the PC, with the plug-and-play yeah. initiative, but that's not going to take effect until next and year. And would it depend on kind of what machines your friends have or what you have at work? Yeah, I actually think that's an excellent point. I think a lot of times if you know people who are using one platform or another, they're going to be able to help you out, provide yeah. you some hand-holding, you know, teach you about the software. Okay. Today we will help you pick a new computer, whether you decide on a Mac or a PC. Now, for many of you who already own a desktop computer, your big decision is what kind of notebook computer to buy now. And to help you, we're going to visit a CompUSA store with an expert to find out what's the best deal in a notebook computer. There's so many notebook computers on the market. How do you determine what's the best one for you? Owen Lender Holmes, senior editor of PC World magazine, says choosing a 486 processor now may save you money in the long run. Prices have dropped so fast on them all the time that you're, be you're best off deciding what you can afford now um, and buying the best notebook you can for that amount of money. That way it'll last a bit longer. If you, if you shop at the low end, it just means it'll be obsolete all that much quicker. Screen displays range from monochrome at the low end to passive matrix color in the mid-range up to active matrix color at the high end. They're really sharp and clear. You can see them from any angle. They're almost, as, almost the same as looking at a regular desktop computer's monitor. They cost you about $1,000 extra, though. Different models have different kinds of input devices. The most common is a trackball mouse that clips onto the side of the unit. But it's best to try several different ones to find out what's best for you. Battery range is another important feature to consider. Battery lives range from about three to six hours. Um, you can typically expect to get what the, the lower end of what a manufacturer claims. So if they say three to five hours, you can expect three. If they say four to six, you can expect four. Um, don't count on any more than that because the chances are you won't get it. If you need more than that, buy a spare battery, keep it charged up, and then just swap it in when, when the time comes. What you want your notebook computer to do should determine how much money you spend. Prices range from one to five thousand dollars. At the one thousand then we're talking a three eighty six, two megabytes of RAM, sixty meg megabyte hard drive. Uh, pretty low end computer, screen will be a monochrome, you'll get a floppy drive. There's not much else that you'll get in that. Um, at the high end, a five thousand uh, dollar laptop, you're talking about one with an active matrix color screen, really sharp and clear, um, a DX two fifty or a DX two sixty six processor. Um, lots of memory, lots of hard drive space, maybe even as much as 200 megabytes. This is a computer which should rival one on anybody's desktop. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
If you're thinking about buying an IBM PC-compatible desktop computer, you have lots of decisions to make. Here to help you are Lisa Dio, author of this book, How to Use Your Computer. Also with us over there, Wendy Taylor, senior editor with PC Computing and co-author of the Streetwise Guide to PCs. This is your book over here, Lisa, How to Use Your Computer Before You Can Get to Use It. You've got to buy it. I want to ask you about buying it. Any kind of basic rule about buying a new PC? Well, really, there's two issues to consider. There's what you're actually going to buy, and there's who you're going to buy it from. Yeah. I kind of want to start with the second. I think one of the most important things, especially for people who are buying their first PCs, is you don't want to prioritize price too much. I mean, price is important. What you're really looking for is a store that has a good reputation, and particularly a good reputation for service and support. You don't want the PC to break a week later and they don't remember your name. Or even if you can't figure something out, you want to be able to call somebody That's and say, right. help, how do I do this? That's right. Okay, so price isn't everything. Price is not Okay, everything. what about what machine you should look for? Um, at this point, if I were buying a new PC, I would buy a 486. That's a 486, not a 386. That's right. If you're buying a used PC, you might consider a 386. But a new computer, I'd buy a 486. Okay. What kind of 486 is? Lots of different processors you can get. It really depends on what you're trying to do. If all you're doing is word processing, an SX may be sufficient. If you're doing a lot of different applications at once, and you're running Windows, and you're using databases or graphics, mm -hmm. you're probably going to want a DX or DX2. Okay. So you go for a 486. How about the memory question? 2 megs of RAM, 4, 8, 16. How do you know what you need and how much you should spend Again, on it? Again, it depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're going to be using Windows, and uh, almost all of us are going to have to be using Windows whether we want to or not, right. um, you're going to want at least 4 megabytes. Don't let them sell you a 2 megabyte machine for Windows. So that's your absolute minimum. And that would really be for basically word processing and not a lot more. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be doing database applications, for example, under Windows, you're really talking 8 megs at a wow. minimum. 16 is nice. 8 would be a minimum. All right, let's take a look at an example. We have a PC compatible over here running Windows. Uh -huh. and maybe you should move your mouse or whatever so we can get something up on the screen. Show me what happens if you don't have enough memory in your machine. Well, let me just show you what we're running at the moment. We've got Paradox for Windows, which is a database application. We've got WordPerfect, Solitaire, uh, and Excel all happening at the same the time. Program so managers the up there, of course. Right, we're all in, they're okay, all in so memory. We're running five things here. Right. And what happens now? Now, this is an 8 meg machine, right? This is an 8 meg machine, which is borderline for all this okay. stuff at once, and for especially for database stuff. So here we are, and I'm going to so open. We're going to launch a file, and we wait. And this is, this is because it's a database application, and there's too little memory and too mm -hmm. much going on. I mean, it would be the same issue in Access or other database applications. This just really is very borderline. So wait, 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 access, 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 and right. that's because not enough RAM. That's right. And dependent on the CPU also. That's right. All right, you've got two keyboards here. Let me ask you about this. A lot of people don't even think about touching the keyboard when they buy their PC, but that's pretty important, isn't it? That's what you touch. It, you know, it's funny. It seems trivial, but it makes a really big difference in how happy you're going to be with and the What computer. would the difference be in these two keyboards you have here? Well, a lot of it's the difference is touch and sound. Um, so this is a more standard keyboard. It's sort of softer touch, it's not a big click. a little mushy and uh -huh. soft and doesn't make a lot of noise. This, and this is fairly standard now. This is more, uh, this is a lot like the original IBM PC keyboard. Yeah. It tends to be noisier and um, a little stiffer and it makes a click when you press the keys. The thing that's nice about that um, is you can really tell when the keys are pressed. Yeah. It's, it's not a question in your mind. And people who are recently moving over from typewriters mm -hmm. often like this feel. Key is try out the keyboard, that's important. That's right, right try well, typing. Yeah, lastly, real quickly, what about the display? How much money should you spend? Do you need SVGA? Do you need a real classy display, a fast video card, so on? Again, it depends on what you're doing. I think Super VGA would be a good place to start. Um, you want to see the monitor running your application. You don't want to see it displaying beautiful photographs. If you want to see it. Text, that's yeah. right. You want to see it doing what you're going to be doing. If not exactly your program, then an equivalent. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much. I'm going to go over here and join Wendy. And Wendy, I guess if you're thinking about buying a new PC, even if you're upgrading to a new PC, you look at the ads in the paper, you look at the ads in the magazines, and I know you're interested in that field. Let's look at a couple typical ads in a magazine and tell me what the consumer should look out for. The, let's take a look at this one over here. Big two-page ad with just tons of information. What should I learn from this? There's almost too much information here. You really ought to have an idea of what you want before you go in. And check out the ad for the things that really aren't there often, things like service, support. Mm -hmm. This just lists a bunch of features, and it's really, exactly. I don't really learn a lot from this, do I? You do want to make sure that things that you want are included, however. Uh -huh. Very often a monitor isn't included in the price right. listed. All right, let's take a look at tab across to one of the other ones here. Okay, what about this ad? In this case, again, look for things you know that aren't here very often, or look in the fine print. Very often it's teeming with hidden costs, things like shipping and handling mm -hmm. um, that aren't listed here. You also get product awards um, for very often this is not for the product that appears here. It's actually something the company has mm -hmm. won. So that doesn't mean this isn't legitimate at all. Right. It just means it's something you just need to... Just beware. It's sort of like exactly. looking for automobile ads. Huh? 
And then okay, in this one case, more ad on this this multimedia PC ad. This one is offers a lot of a lot of things bundled in with the machine. Just make sure the things that are bundled are okay. what you need. So I get all these CDs, and maybe I don't really care. I don't need these exactly. CDs, right? And you might try to negotiate for other things instead, mm -hmm. too. And how about the multimedia standard? It says MPC and, and MPC Plus and so on. What does that mean? Again, know what you need in terms of multimedia, whether you need sound, whether you need video, because the standards are still being hammered out. So, yeah, so nobody really knows. I'm going to say this is the standard. That's probably not true right exactly. now. Exactly. Okay, we're talking about multimedia PCs, and you have an example of a new multimedia PC one might have bought here with lots mm -hmm. of goodies in it. Tell me what's in here, and how important is multimedia? That's the big buzzword. And do people need to get a multimedia PC? Well, it depends on whether you need your uh, system to bark at you, I guess. <laughs> okay. But this one, for example, has a sound card in it. It's got speakers. Right. It's got a CD-ROM drive. It's also got a video MPEG playback board from Sigma Designs. Um, and what is that? That's, it plays back movies, 30 mm -hmm. frames per second, full screen. It basically turns it into a PC. So without that board, you might not be able to. Show us an exactly. example. I mean, we run a, a video for Windows Movie here, so we'll see what you're okay. talking about. This is an MPEG movie. Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure. Well, that's pretty impressive stuff. Flight. I mean, that's full screen, Christ moving video, good system. sound, et cetera. Exactly. You know, that's not automatically going to come with my PC because somebody not says it's all. multimedia. Not at all. In fact, most multimedia PCs <laughs> come with merely a sound card and a CD-ROM drive. Um, once you get into nice speakers that actually sound good, you're adding another $500 to the price, mm -hmm. $100 to $500. Um, again, with the MPEG decompression board, you're adding, you know, another four or $500. So total, it's another $1,000. So think um, about whether that 1000 bucks is really going to is going to be something you're going to use. If you're just playing games, it's probably not worth it. Huh? Exactly. Okay. This is your book, Streetwide. Streetwise Guide to PCs, and I know one of the things you're concerned about is the thing Lisa was talking about, service and support and warranty and so on. How, how important is that? Sometimes we think, well, PCs don't break. I don't really care about that stuff. Oh, it's very important. For example, you really want to be sure when you buy a system, PCs are very reliable. So you want to okay. make sure that it comes with at least a one-year warranty mm -hmm. because if a manufacturer doesn't offer it, they're, they're probably hiding something. And PCs if it's going to break, it's going to break soon probably. Is what in you're the saying. first 30 days uh -huh. usually, yeah. Okay, so what do you look for in the warranty? And, well, you want to ask, this is a, a warranty card, but what you really want to do is ask, make sure that everything in the PC is covered by the warranty. Mm -hmm. Very not often, just the motherboard or not just something Exactly. Else. Okay. And you want to make sure that the dealer honors it directly. So you're not chasing down the company. You actually you can, can bring it in. You the and they don't say mail it back to the manufacturer, wherever that manufacturer exactly. is. Exactly. Thank you, Wendy. For many computer shoppers, the easiest way to buy a new PC is by mail order, either directly from the manufacturer or through one of the many mail order dealers. You can buy a computer assembled to your specifications and loaded with your choice of software just by picking up the phone. Direct buying houses like this one, PCs Complete, carry a wide variety of brand name computers at lower than retail prices. Marty Jerome, senior editor of PC Computing, says you should think of a direct vendor's advertisement as its storefront. You should look for the fine print. Almost every direct vendor will have some f fine print in their ads. And this shouldn't deter you in itself. All vendors have to have disclaimers. But things to look for that are unfair are restocking fees, which can be 15 to 20 percent. Uh, Clauses that say no money back, no refunds, all purchases are final. There's subtle language like this that can take you to the cleaners. Many direct vendors offer complete service and technical support on everything they sell. Uh, tech support, Joel speaking. May I help you? Direct merchants often have highly knowledgeable sales reps, but before you make your deal, you should know exactly what you want in terms of components, power, and price. PC Computing publishes a spec watch to help you sort it all out. We've listed all the specs that you should look for and grill your salesperson about before you buy. For example, many of us know that we want a, a 13 millisecond hard drive, but do you know that you want full height or half height or that it needs to have self-parking heads and diagnostic software should be included or that you shouldn't pay extra for the, the mounting rails. We've tried to list all these issues, including some red flags, things to watch out for and that you can get charged extra for. Never pay cash for a direct mail purchase. Credit cards are safer. And if there's something wrong with your computer when it arrives, don't wait. Return it immediately for replacement or a refund. The onus is on you to get satisfaction, and sometimes this requires two or three phone calls in when there's a discrepancy in a bill or, or in a purchase. And as long as you're persistent, as long as you're tenacious, you can usually get satisfaction.
For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Suppose your heart is set on a new Macintosh computer. That choice can be confusing, too. Here to help us out on the Mac side are Rick Mishlevsky, executive editor with Mac User Magazine, and also over there, Galen Grumman, who is senior associate editor with Mac World Magazine. Rick, let's start with you. We've got six Macintosh computers here. The good news is the prices keep on coming down. The bad news is they keep on changing the names of the models so we don't know what Mac is doing what. So kind of quickly run us through the whole Macintosh line here. First of all, I want to say that you'd never see a lineup like this in a computer store again because Apple has decided to break its line into four different groups. It has the education line, the home line, the business line, and the mobile line. We have representatives of each here. There's a Performa here from the home line, mm -hmm. an LC3 from the education line. Over here we have some centrises, now quadras, you're right, they are changing the names, right. from the business line as well as a quadra also from the business line and a power book from the mobile line. All right, let's take these one at a time. This is the low end here, the performer now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, what's the price range here, and what what's the, the right end user here for this machine? The right end user is someone who's buying their first computer or bringing a computer home and doesn't want to worry about it at all. The performer, you take it out of the box. There's a large set of instructions. You plug it in. The software is already installed. The modem software is all installed. Plug it into your phone line, plug it into your keyboard, and you're off and running. Computer for a dummy, turn it on, you don't have to know anything. Not a thing. And about how much would the Performa cost? This is the high end of the Performa line, so this one's around $1,800. CD-ROM drive, it's got all the stuff CD-ROM, dual-speed CD-ROM. Uh -huh. It has a microphone built in, as you see. It's around $1,800. You can get Performas way down yeah. there below a thousand. A good thousand. home computer Excellent and a Macintosh. Home All right, let's go to the LC3. This is an interesting Mac here. It's the LC3 was once the most, most popular Mac involved and it's an excellent business machine. Now it's, been tra it's transitioning into the education line. So it's sold only in university and school groups. However, if you ever find one used and you really want a good machine for yourself, pick up an LC3. All right, when you say education, if I want to get one for my kid to use in mm -hmm. school, is this a good machine? Then? Excellent if they're in a university. If they're a child at home, you might want to look into a performer. Still a performer. Okay, so these are the two lower end ones. Let's go mm -hmm. over to the two Centris or now Quadris machines over there and tell us why I'd want those. These are the standard run-of-the-mill Buicks or Chevys, shall we say, the business this line. This is your business computer. This is your business okay. computer. Unlike most machines that are in the Windows or DOS market, these have everything you need already on the motherboard, so your expansion is not really a so problem. So the networking's already inside. Networking's in there. Sound is in there. The video is already in there. You're set. So you don't have to worry about a lot of slots. You plug in, you go. Okay. The 610 has one slot, a 7-inch new bus slot, so it's slightly limited in the amount of cards it can take. The 650 over there has three new bus slots, so you can do quite a bit of expansion. And slightly faster slightly processor? Slightly faster processor. All right, and how about the biggie over here? We've got this big Quadra 840, and why would you want that one? This is the 840AV. Besides being the most powerful one currently, it's also the most versatile in that we have, as you can see, a microphone on top of the monitor and speakers at the bottom of the monitor. This is a true multimedia machine in that it'll understand what you're saying, perform your commands, read things back to you. You can hook your phone up. Upcoming software is going to allow you to use this as an answering machine. You have a CD-ROM built in. You have lots of processor space. I mean, you have lots of RAM space. It's, it's a machine for quite a few years. Top of the end, how much money for this quadrant? Top of the end, if you want a list price, around 4000 okay. But of course, you can go below that. All right, lastly, a couple seconds left. Let's talk about mm -hmm. the good old PowerBook here. And All everybody's right. running around with these. What's, what PowerBook is this one? This particular one is a 270C, which is your active matrix 32,000 color a duo machine. It's called a duo because it has two lives, mm -hmm. both a mobile machine and also in a duo dock. Plug it in, it's your desktop machine with a full scale monitor. Top of the line power book. Top and of the line. For about how much money? Which we're saying these go out for about $3,000 now fully equipped. Okay, Rick, thank you very much. I want to go over here and join Galen. Galen, the question I have for you is as we heard before in the PC segment, what kind of hardware you want or need really depends on what kind of software you're going to run. And give us some examples of the kind of applications that people should be thinking about, particularly in the business end, the machines you have here. For the business end, there's several po programs everyone uses, and uh, Microsoft Word is one, Microsoft Excel is another, Quark Express and PageMaker sort of our so presentations, desktop publishing, database, word processor, You've spreadsheet, the usual. All right, go through one at a time and show us what the demands on the hardware are of these applications. Okay, I'll start with Microsoft Word, the uh, standard uh, word processing program. Uh, you have graphics in your word processing, you have uh, fonts in your word processing, it's not just like a typewriter. So an important point is even though this is a word processor, it's not a text thing, you've got a lot of graphics to process, still going right. to chew up a lot of power. That's right. This fact sheet is a good example of that. Sure. Uh, spreadsheets is another very popular application. Here's Microsoft Excel. This is the large database and as you scroll through the database of lots of data here, it's probably 6,000 cells of uh -huh. data, you can see that even on a fast processor it takes some time. 
uh, and this is the kind of process you want to do a lot of data entry for so budgets or whatever. if you're doing big spreadsheets, you need a big machine to You've support. got it. All right, what other applications? Uh, databases. FileMaker Pro, again, is the standard on the Mac, and uh, this, one, this one lets you put pictures and even sound, although you don't do that very often, mm -hmm. with your uh, data, and again, that requires more processing power. Uh, publishing is what the Mac is famous for, sure. and there's two big programs here. Eldis PageMaker is the one most people know about. Uh, Mac user is an example of a uh, publication that does use it to produce its mm -hmm. pages. And again, very graphics intensive, so it's going to take a lot of computation Extremely. power. Extremely. The other one similar is uh, Quark Express, which Macworld uses in addition to PageMaker, and it too is very resource intensive because it does a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now you will hear people say, well, these will run on any Mac. Is that true? It is true, but you wouldn't want to run them on any Mac. Um, on a Performer or an LC3, they'll work okay. It's However, slow and sluggish. Slow, sluggish. Uh, you won't have enough memory. You're wasting your time. Your time is worth something. So spend $500 yeah. more and get a uh, business machine like a Quadra 610 or 650. All right. Now, these five application examples you were showing us before, I mean, these are high-end applications, Word, Excel, PageMaker, Quark, et cetera. Yeah. There are smaller versions. I mean, just because I want to do word processing or a spreadsheet or a database doesn't mean I need this much power, does That's it? That's right. I mean, uh, you can get things like Right Now, which is a uh, very good word processor that is, uh, works fine on a performer or an LC. You can get the works programs. Several companies have works programs, which let you do database mm -hmm. and spreadsheet stuff. You know, it's half the price. Why spend the money if you don't need it? If you do need it, though, you want the software and this hardware. So the, the issue is how, how serious am I about these applications? Not if I want to use a spreadsheet or if I want to use That's a right. database. But is it for business? Is it heavy stuff? Is it the kind of stuff I'm going to be doing all day long? If you're spending several hours a day on it, you probably want to get the, what's the best, most powerful and the best for you. So bottom line, what we've heard all day long is to decide, if you want to decide what hardware to buy, you've got to decide what software you're going to use and what hardware do you need to support That's right. That. I also say get a little bit more than you think you might need because you're going to grow. Good point. So buy now and benefit later. All right. Thank you, Galen. That's our guide to buying a new computer. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, ISA plug-and-play technology picked up strong industry support at Fall Comdex where 19 prototypes were on display. ISA plug-and-play is designed to make it easier for users to plug cards into desktops and notebooks. Computer Chronicles will bring you a full half-hour report on Fall Comdex next week. Microsoft Works version 3.0 has hit the market. The integrated software package includes a word processor, database manager, a telecommunications program, Olay technology, and more than 100 new features and enhancements. Windows programmers who work in groups may be interested in the latest offering from Omega Systems. Versions lets programmers keep track of all current and past project resources, including source code, documentation, and other files. Version sells for $99. One copy is required for each workstation on a network. Micro Express has introduced its first active matrix color notebook PC called the NB8266. It features a 486DX2 microprocessor, 200 megabyte fast hard disk, and PCMCIA expansion slot. The new Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia will be the first electronic encyclopedia to feature full screen, full motion, picture quality video. World War II footage and NASA Space Shuttle video are featured. The CD-ROM will be bundled with a Sigma Designs upgrade kit, which includes an MPEG decompression board for video playback. And you can change the course of history with the Gettysburg for Windows interactive battle simulation program. Users may assume the role of General Robert E. Lee or other famous Civil War participants to direct marches and issue orders. Gettysburg for Windows contains historically accurate information, photos, and documents. It sells for $49.95. You can track your family tree on your PC with the new Family Tree Maker for Windows from Banner Blue Software. There's room for up to one million relatives per family file. Users can customize the layout of their family tree printout or add photos and descriptions of each family member. Families and friends will have access to free video conferencing services during the Christmas holiday week, courtesy of Management Recruiters International. 80 sites around the country will be available for the free holiday video visits. To reserve your space, call MRI at 1-800-875-4000. And if you're looking for a gift for that hacker with a sense of humor, how about the first advanced, state-of-the-art, high-performance, totally integrated, revolutionary, leading-edge, 
high-tech joke book. The 210-page book contains jokes about computers, software, science, and mathematics. The little book with the long title sells for $14.95. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson.